kingdom of God is not something that is very far away in heaven. It is here right now. And we have them all within ourselves. We only have to unlock it and use it every day. And then we will see how better a person we become, how wise, how loving, and how satisfied a person we will become. Of course, the spiritual attainment is not measured in material sense or value, but it is just the frustrating inability of anyone to express a greater value of insight. We have to start somewhere. Because most of people will ask me, what is the use of practice meditation, of getting enlightenment at all? If we're not enlightened, is that all right or not? <laughs> yes, it is all right. It is very, very much all right. But look at our world. Is it absolutely all right? If the answer is no, that means we're lacking something despite all our material comfort, all the scientific uh, invention. Our world is probably all right in some part, perhaps in Australia, but not all right in many other parts. And why? It is because of lack of wisdom. It is because we cling to our small little knowledge and trying to do things to conquer the world with this little knowledge that we have. Should we have access to the whole wisdom, which is incredible, absolutely unimaginable, then we would do things in the better way. And the world would have become long ago a paradise perhaps even better than the life we have in Australia right now. And we see even then in the most advanced country, technologically speaking, or <laughs> perhaps materially speaking, there are still a lot of uncontrollable incidents which harm human lives. You see, uh, when I was on the way to, to you in this uh, theater, one of my fellow practitioners in Kwaning Method, she drove me in her car, and she was thanking me, <laughs> I don't know why, for helping her to buy this car in just five minutes, <laughs> whereby she searched about <laughs> half a year before and couldn't buy it. Every time someone, just somebody took it away. But this time she succeeded. And she thought because she prayed to me, I said, well, it is all your spiritual merit. It had nothing to do with me, but she couldn't believe it. It's all right. A rest as it is. But I said, why did you have to buy a new car? She said, because the car was stolen. I said, what? In Australia? Are you some somebody stole your car? I can't believe it. <laughs> I thought it is this economic situation in Australia is very stable. I was so shocked to hear it. But she said, it's true. They still do sometimes. All right. Why do people steal? Even in such a very stable country where even the poor got looked after. No one going to be starved on the street, really, in Australia, right? You have social security benefit, right? For the non-employee, is that right? Yeah, should be, yes. In many countries like that, in England, France, or Germany also, you get social uh, security money when you are temporarily out of work or without any means to support yourself while you're sick or something. It's very secure. But why do people still, uh, I think, steal cars and things like that? It is not only because of the car itself. It was the old car anyhow. It wasn't the car. It wasn't the desire to steal that is to blame. It was the dissatisfaction in the heart of any human who does this thing. Because he's not contented to accept the way his life is or what God has meant to give him. Dissatisfaction. Why dissatisfaction? 
because an enlightened, an enlightened mind is a very unsatisfied mind. Even if that person were given a better car, he might not stop there. He might want another car or next an airplane. It is because we are unsatisfied with ourselves. We do not know the source of all richness, of all power. So we want this and that and others, even when it's not very necessary. Why we want these things? It is because we have been in glory, in freedom, in richness, before in heaven, before we descended into this lowly stage of thinking that we are just a human being, that we have no power, that we don't know anything, that it is very difficult to attain heaven. But I can assure you that even then, even now, we still can attain heaven, and very quickly, fast, and right here, right where we live. We don't need to go to Himalaya, even though I did. <laughs> But it was not necessary for anyone to do that. I was probably destined to do so. You see, many people have uh, different ideas about asceticism. They think if we forsake the whole world and family and go into a cave and meditate in the Himalaya, then they will attain freedom. It's not true. It's not true. I did that just because God wanted me to do that, so that I can tell you that it's not necessary to do that. Otherwise, <laughs> you would not believe me. Probably you say, "Oh, you can't do it yourself. You're afraid of the Himalaya cold. Therefore, you tell us not to go because you yourself can't do it. You don't have any experience." But I had ex this experience in order to tell you that it was absolutely not necessary. No one need to do anything at all. We can just stay right where we are and do what we do now and attain our greatness inside. And then we will still live on earth, but we live in heaven at the same time. We discharge our social responsibilities, but we have no desire for the reward, and we have no attachment to the possession that we have or not have. We will have no desire for the neighbors' things or wives or husbands. Then, actually, the so-called precepts will just become very natural way of life for us, and is not a precept anymore. These precepts are only guidelines, while we were still unable to control our mind. But once we are in control of our mind, action and speech, effortlessly. Then these precepts are just child play, and we don't keep the precepts anymore because there's no necessary to keep them. We don't do anything that is not precepted, anyhow. And even then, if we do, we know why, and we do not torment ourselves with the self-inflict guilt that was not necessary in that. Place in that instant, but before we can do everything effortlessly, we must attain the state of understanding, of knowing the will of God, I mean knowing the plan of the universe, that at which moment we should do what, and why, and we have no resistance from within or without to accept life the way it is, and also to go on. With our business, with our heavy burden, with our feeling exhausted from just a few hours of work, and then, even then, if we work a few hours a day, the effectiveness would be much more than before. We put a lot of effort in, and we couldn't do much. Most of the master after enlightenment do not advocate people to leave their family. And、their friends, their business, to go into solitude, or to become a monk, and all that. It is because they have seen through that these outer things 
will not help us to attain the inner tranquility of mind. It is only we truly renounce from within that we truly have an everlasting desireless state. If we force ourselves too early to leave our family ties and responsibility, just like a fruit which is not yet ripened, and we forcefully take it from the tree, then it's useless. We couldn't eat it, and the fruit will not be able to last very long either. It's neither good for the fruit nor good for us. Most of our fellow practitioners in the Kuan Yin method, means the method of uh, contacting the true heavenly light and sound, which represents our true supreme wisdom within. They are so-called laymen, layperson. There were no monks and nuns. But their level of attainment is incredible. And it is difficult to measure their attainment unless you talk to them or see their way of life and their enlightenment in action. Perhaps how they handle difficult situation, perhaps how they tend to their family and helping social mission at the same time, perhaps in how they deal with aggressive people lovingly, perhaps in how they discharge their duties in such a quick, witty, and effective way. Perhaps in how they look so contented and peaceful in any situation that would uh, blow other people's uh, temperament apart. Perhaps in these ways, we may be able to perceive somewhat the difference between these practitioners and the ordinary person. Otherwise, from the outlook, it's very difficult to know. Perhaps we have read somewhere in those uh, spiritual novels that after you practice some kind of meditation a long time, you became very youthful, forever young, and never die, and never sick, uh, beautiful, more beautiful than before, etc. These probably are true in some degree, but it doesn't happen to all spiritual practitioners because they don't aim at this material manifestation of wisdom. Perhaps it helps you to be healthier because you are more carefree within your heart and you are more uh, surrender to the will of the universe rather than taking the whole world up on your shoulder and can't do nothing about it. Just go around worrying all day and age yourself quickly. Therefore, perhaps in this sense, the practitioners look younger, more relaxed and healthy and loving and happy. But I don't think we should expect a practitioner of 80 years old turn into 18, for example, just because he practiced a heavenly presence. But the people who eat vegetarian, who practice the Guan Yin method, do truly look better. Some look even immediately better after the initiation that even I myself <laughs> was sometimes uh, very surprised. I am not surprised in the sense that I don't expect this to happen, but I'm surprised that that person looks so different, that much more different than uh, expected, and so quickly. All this because our wisdom, our supreme power, is starting to work and to correct whatever the misconstruction within our body, within our mental, or within our speech. Therefore, our appearance truly do look different. But it is not very important. All these fairy tales truly does uh, exist. For example, before we hear that uh, certain such person uh, in his dream or in his difficulty, a fairy goddess or mother guardian will come and help him out and things like that. All these things happen right now, in this century even. 
and all the spiritual healing powers and all kind of incredible supernatural power do truly exist if we practice the kingdom of God, the supreme wisdom, which is our birthright and is always there for us to achieve. If we do not practice this, if we do not find a way to recognize our greatest inheritance, no one will say anything to us. Absolutely no one has the right to say anything. It's only us, we, who suffer the loss. That we have a great treasure and we don't use it. And we suffer so much or we have some happiness, but only very partial, very short-lived. And sometimes it is the cause of the next sorrow of tomorrow. Therefore the choice is for us to wake up into our glory or to sleep in our darkness and denying ourselves all the things that other people every day experience, which is good, which is excellent, which is incredible, which is beneficial for themselves, for their environment, for their immediate circle, and for the world at large. If we do not get enlightenment, we do not know our supreme power, we deny ourselves the greatest privilege that even angels envy, even small gods in lower heavenly region are jealous of. And that is a pity. We are the only one to be blamed. And so, uh, since I am here already, due to my fellow practitioners' kindness and invitation, I am willing to share with you the way to regain your greatness, to experience your true self, to have all your wishes fulfilled and to live a more worthy life. Even though we all will die, so-called die later, or our, our body will decay, but at least while we are on this earth, we will live a heroic life, a strong, spiritual, and we are the power for other people to look up to and to uh, inspire other people to rely upon their own strength with this insight, which is incredible, which I have no true words to explain. I thank you for your attention, and maybe if you like to tell me something or ask some question, you're welcome. Keep the uh, enlightenment state, and to be faster, you better be vegetarian. Oh, my brother, it is not desirable to eat other beings' flesh. Don't you think so? Why is it desirable to kill for your body? The rules outside are only the so-called secret method for people to want to get enlightenment quickly and to preserve it. Just if you want to follow this path, it is best for you to follow the completely and wholeheartedly if you are to expect the best result of it. Are there more than one stage of enlightenment? Yes, yes, more, more, yes. How does one know he or she has been enlightened? How does one not know? If you graduate from college, how do you know? Do you know it? Yes, yes. When one is enlightened, can there be circumstances that would lead to non-enlightenment? No, no. When you've grown up, you've grown up. You can grow back to the infant state. You might stop or retard, but you will not grow back to the infant hate again. Can you tell us of love? No. I can't. 
<laughs> Why? Because these things are not to be told in language. Suppose you love your wife, how can you describe that love? You can only know it between each other. To the outsider, it means nothing. Doesn't matter how you explain it. With respect, we would like you to explain about reincarnation. Reincarnation is supposed to be for some so-called non-enlightened state of mind, which seek to fulfill the pleasures, the desires, which uh, that person has not completely fulfilled during his stage of a certain kind of being. For example, if we uh, are so much in love with someone in this lifetime, and then for some reason the love is not fulfilled or not substituted in another way, then after both person die, he'll probably be reincarnated again and search for that old love which you have uh, cared so much about. I have no question, but I only ask that you take my love. Thank you. Thank you.